everybody, my name is Carl Merritt. And I'm Maha Hayat. And we are some of the gastroenterology fellows at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. On behalf of everyone in our department, I would want to welcome you. And thank you for joining us on a tour of our facility. We're currently in the Andrews Academic Tower where our academic offices are housed. And so we're going to start the tour off by taking you guys up to the seventh floor and showing you around our offices. Okay guys, so we're going to pause here and take an opportunity to tell you a little bit about our campus. Uh, one thing we really appreciate about our campus is that all of our clinical responsibilities are in one place between several different clinic and hospital buildings. And all of these buildings are actually connected through a sky bridge so that when the weather's nasty or it's really hot outside, you're covered. That's right. And just to show you how close the buildings are, the one brown building closest to us is our outpatient clinic. Beyond that is the main hospital, and right next to it is the new adult tower. Here on my left side, we have the children's hospital, and right at the back of it is the VA. Now let's go look at our GI department suite. So right now we're in the GI fellows office. This space serves as an area where we can study, perform some research, or even make private calls to our patients. And important to point out that we have access to hard copies and online access to Schlesinger and Fortran, as well as the DDCEP question bank. And we also have $1,300 a year available for traveling to different conferences with more funds available if you haven't accepted abstract. Right down the hall here, we have our boardroom. This is where we meet with Dr. Kearney every quarter here. Uh, for a feedback session we call the PD Cafe. This is where we discuss the state of the program, what areas there are for improvement, and us fellows, we really appreciate it. How about we now head over to our outpatient clinic. So this is one of our standard uh, clinic rooms. Uh, we have a half day of continuity clinic over on the OU side here once a week, in addition to a half day of continuity clinic at the VA once a week. Uh, so from here, we're gonna take you guys over to the adult tower uh, to see our endoscopy suites. Okay, so this is uh, one of our dictation rooms, an area that we have uh, dedicated to rounding and immediately adjacent to this is one of our two advanced endoscopy rooms that are equipped for fluoroscopy. We'll do anything from uh, EUS, ERCP to even balloon enteroscopy. And because we don't have an advanced fellow, uh, our general fellows have very good access uh, for those interested to get in on some of these advanced procedures. Right down the hall we have a couple of rooms that are dedicated to our monitored anesthesia care and our moderate sedation rooms for more generalized procedures. We have very good numbers. Uh, on average, our fellows graduate having done about 500 EGDs in addition to about 700 colonoscopies. So we get a fair bit of experience as well. So guys, this right here is our standard endoscopy suite. We do cases with moderate sedation here, whereas the room next door is dedicated to monitored anesthesia care, with the option of general anesthesia always available if need. Let's walk over to our endoscopy workroom. We stock our tubes here. We use Olympus, Olympus 190 for both upper endoscopy and colonoscopy. We have probation for documentation and we have excellent support staff, nurses, technicians who are available 24 seven, who set up our travel cards for us and process our scopes after our procedures are done, even if it's in the middle of the night. Now we're going to go upstairs real quick to show you what the general floor of our hospital looks like. Alright guys, so this is one of our hospital floors. The hospital itself uh, comprises of 680 beds with around 82 ICU beds. But with the construction of the new adult tower, we should have an additional 144 beds, uh, 32 OR suites, and actually new ICUs as well. Alright, so this is one of our typical ER rooms. Uh, for the sake of patient privacy, we obviously can't show you the busy ER uh, behind you. Uh, but there are 34 beds here in the ER with an additional 10 observation beds. Additionally, OU is a level 1 trauma, so we have a trauma bay, brings a lot of uh, patients in. Uh, and we are occasionally asked to uh, do procedures down here, and obviously we uh, evaluate patients pretty frequently down here as new consoles. 
All right, guys, so this is one of our three cafeterias on campus between uh, here, the VA, and the Children's Hospital, uh, which also includes Starbucks and uh, Subway as well. Uh, pretty standard fare here. We have a salad bar and a grill and some prepackaged foods, and we get $240 a uh, quarter to spend between the three of them. Uh, so now we're going to take a, a walk over to the Children's Hospital and show you that. Okay, and for the second to last stop on our tour, this is the Children's Hospital. We are sometimes called upon to help our colleagues out in pediatric GI with interventions on some of their patients, as well as to evaluate patients in the high-risk OB department. Uh, we're also here every Wednesday from 3 to 5 for our uh, conferences. That includes pathophysiology, liver case files, IBD case files, as well as core conferences and uh, presentations made by our faculty. And then so for the last part of our tour, we're going to take you guys over to our simulation center. Hey guys, I'm Zaid Hanafi. I'm one of the third year gastroenterology fellows at OU. And I'm Blair Kirkpatrick. I'm one of the second year gastroenterology fellows. We want to pause right now while we're in the simulation center um, and uh, talk about a few things that we weren't able to before. Uh, because of you know res video restrictions at the VA, we um, you know, were not able to show that to you. So I just wanted to highlight um, some points about our VA training. It does play a very significant role in our training as gastroenterologists here at OU. Uh, we get bread and butter, uh, screening and surveillance, outpatient endoscopy, EGDs, and colonoscopies. You get a very robust number there. And so that plays a critical role in our training as endoscopists. Uh, but also, uh, you know, at the VA, we have our consult uh, service, uh, as well as our outpatient continuity clinic, which uh, plays a significant role in our training as uh, GI clinicians. We have a robust IBD uh, population, as well as uh, a dedicated hepatology clinic. And for those of you that are interested in hepatology, you are able to make that clinic um, a part of your continuity um, at the VA. Right, and then um, I would like to touch upon our call schedule for the fellows here. So we're basically a class of eight fellows. So the way it works is that we have our consult fellows on from 7 a.m. in the morning to 5 p.m. And then there's a weekday call fellow who takes over from 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. This is a call from home. So you're answering pages from home unless there's an emergency that you have to come in for. That's Monday to Thursday. And then there's a fellow who's covering Friday 5 p.m. to Monday 7 a.m. And that um, call will happen every eighth weekend, which I felt was a pretty major change from residency having seven weekends off. Yes, so let's go in and check out the endoscopy simulator. Ah. Ah. Come on! Oh, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Nice. I didn't catch you there. I was just practicing my skills on the skills center here. Uh, yeah, welcome. So come on in. I'll show you here. We have our sim center, and it's a really useful tool that us fellows like to use. I'm Vince Petros. Nice to meet you all. One of the third years here. And one of the nice resources we have here is our GI mentor and simulator that we love putting into use. I remember when I was a first year and my first day was at actually endoscopy. I had never touched a scope in my life and I was pretty panicked and anxious. But fortunately, I actually went through all the modules through this simulator and it's about 20 hours worth of introductory and fundamentals to endoscopy. It is exquisitely sensitive and useful to our needs as new trainees particularly myself, would never handle an endoscopy scope or any of the materials and tools we actually commonly encounter in day-to-day -day practice. So I found that to be immensely helpful. And one of the great things, not only having 24-7 access to the simulator lab here with your badge that our program funds and pays for, to complete all these modules, we actually have half days on Mondays where the latter half or the entire afternoon is protected time to have and spend here and dedicate that training to get in some hours to become a little more well acquainted. And I found that really helpful in getting my bearings down about handling, tip control, fine tuning these skills that really does expedite and help facilitate acquiring these new naive endoscopic skills going forward. And In fact, our center has been one of the centers that has put out a good amount of research demonstrating how quickly and much more efficiently 
that trainees acquire these skills with the assistance of the simulator. So that's a really useful tool and adjunct to one of your training skills that you would acquire as a trainee here. So I think that's quite a valuable asset. So I hope you guys would consider that going forward and what we can offer with that. And anything else, I'd be happy to discuss. Feel free to reach out to us. I think I'll catch you guys in a later clip, in fact, later on in this video. So I'll see you guys shortly. I'll just get back to my uh, balloon popping that I like to do in my uh, leisure time. and I just wanted to kind of, you know, these are challenging times in the COVID pandemic and I know it's going to be even more difficult than previous years because you haven't been able to visit places. So we thought at the end of this tour, uh, we'd give you some idea about why we both chose this place and I've been a resident here, so why I continued on at OU. Um, so the big thing is, I mean, I would firstly want to touch upon Oklahoma City itself as a place because I think that was a big decision for me. Um, and it's been an extremely warm and welcoming place for my family. You'd be surprised at the food options and the entertainment options, which hopefully we'll have again soon, but that have been available for us. Um, generally, Oklahoma is a very friendly place, and so it's always made me feel like this is home. I know speaking for myself, what I was looking for a program is a place that was going to be able to equip me for my goals and achieve my career goals, becoming a board certified, competent, and expert gastroenterologist. And now it's crazy to think we're actually ending and entering our conclusion of the mm -hmm. final year of training to see where we came from. And that's just mind boggling to see this journey to be on. And it's truly a worthy one. And anything in life that's worthy, you have to really devote yourself. And well, we've come this far in medical training. And so it is truly remarkable. I don't feel that I would have been able to achieve that without support of my better half here and my better half at home. And that's the beauty of it is we truly are a family and looking for a program, I'll speak for myself. I was looking for a place where I could be a great fellow and a great father, and a great fellow and a great husband. And having children, him and myself, I don't think I would have been able to do and achieve both of those anywhere else. And that's truly what sets us apart is the exquisite work-life balance. You can attain your career professional goals and truly be there for those that matter to you most and not have to pick or choose between one or the other. You can truly have both and that is what I feel sets us apart. And as you pointed out, Zed, we truly have leaders in the field and experts in every discipline and niche in GI. And to be able to learn and train and have them as our mentors is just unparalleled. And the way I see it is I honestly and truthfully think that we're the greatest kept secret between the coast and in the heartland and that shouldn't be the case and the secret's on the verge of breaking out and I'm very happy we found such a prized possession here. And the metropolitan area, as you pointed out, Zed, is an amazing place to raise a family and truly plant, plant roots and the rich quality of life with well over a, a million people here. So this isn't just middle of nowhere, there's a million and a half people in the metropolitan area. So all the amenities we've grown accustomed to enjoy, you can truly see a seat out here. Right. and. Uh, enjoy the best of all worlds and not have to pick and choose or sacrifice one or the other because I don't feel anything's been neglected. My career, my family, my loved ones, and we truly have a special family here. And I hope that if you consider that you would be consider joining this family and we'd love to hear more from you guys. And I look forward to meeting you guys, regretfully under the conditions currently, but virtually and then hopefully in the long term going forward. So feel free to reach out to us anytime. Yeah, I think if it was a uh, pre-pandemic, then Vince and I would have done a hug to end this conversation. Yes. But I think the biggest we would have made it far more awkward. I think. Yeah, yeah. we've uh, we've always been there for each other, and I think that's the big thing about all the fellows is if anyone needs any, you know, personal time or needs any additional help, then everyone's always been there, and that's the big thing I would like to outline. And I look forward to resuming what we had pre-pandemic, and we'll get the other side of this safely. Okay, see you guys soon.